live from Sacramento, it's Let's Spend the Night Together with Dante and Greg. Tonight's guest, Dennis Rodman. Musical guest, Ozzy Osbourne. Take it away, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Welcome to Let's Spend the Night Together. I am your host, Dante. With me as always is my colleague, cohort, and co-conspirator, Mr. Craig. Craig, tell the fine people how you are uh, doing today, tonight. Not doing bad. I'm glad to hear it. At all. Those are fighting <laughs> words. The way that you, you delivered that line, <laughs> I know, I'm really upset about Confrontational. Instead uh, of just saying good. <laughs> you might be asking yourself, well, what have I stumbled upon? The next great <laughs> saga in comedy. In your life. In podcasting. Yeah. You know, there's thousands of podcasts out there, yeah. but this one's just different. Yeah. Now, we <laughs> yeah, really exactly. care. We're really different. Uh, yeah, what have you stumbled upon? This is a late night chat show where we discuss a wide variety of topics and news. Mm-hmm. From my... Primarily, we focus our attention on pop culture, music, religion, sex, drugs, and uh, an affinity for eating people. If mm. you yeah, up. are offended by anything that you hear, oh. we, keep the, we, we hope that you will keep an open mind. And just yeah. remember, keep telling yourself, these are just jokes. Yes. Because we, we have very serious topics. <laughs> yeah, these are all really serious topics and <laughs> yeah. takes. And everything yeah. we say here, uh, hopefully you take, is to be considered literal. Yeah. We're not joking. These are not Even jokes. Even a we'll, lot of people take it as gospel. Mm, you know it's like, yeah. It's like, this show's like the equivalent of like C-SPAN. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much C-SPAN, but in pop podcast. I almost said popcorn <laughs> in podcast form. I don't want to seem like a <laughs> pious man, Craig, yeah. but I think we're... You're more the penitent man. <laughs> I think we're the next great <laughs> podcast yeah. that hasn't been discovered. Yeah, I think so. And with a lot that, of people are saying that. <laughs> people in Greece of, and... A lot of motion America. on the streets. Yeah. yeah and all the Justin street corners. and a guy in Greece. <laughs> yeah, Those yeah. Too. Shout out and to Greece. Corners. Yeah, shout out to Greece. Uh, one time, I think I looked up how to say, like, hello. Hmm. And, like, I was just it's like, too hard. Oh, I think I'm going to have to not be able to, <laughs> don't think I can carry probably, that torch. It's probably easier for you to learn how to say yeah. hello in, in English. English and how yeah, God like intended it. Hello. How can God intend it? Exactly right. Me? All right. Yeah, uh, Jesus was white and he spoke English. That, yeah, <laughs> that's my Mormon Jesus for you. Yeah. Jesus was like a lumberjack, I guess, then, right? He was, because yeah, he, much, he, yeah. he had the beard. He was around the Americas the, and Mormon Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, man, that's really exciting. i got to check that out. And he was a carpenter. Yeah. Not he, the greatest carpenter, though. No. He gra- he's great at everything except the carpentry. carpentry? He kind of left. Yeah, his yeah. skills, his thoughts were somewhere else. He should no, have focused on his carpentry. That's what I always said. just said. wanted to add, like, a dose of irony where we're like, let's fucking tie him to wood. Bunch of wood. Like <laughs> I never carpenter. thought. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's fucking nail let's him hu- to a bunch yeah, of Yeah, let's humiliate him. <laughs> oh my god! They're like Pontius Pilate. No, we can't do that, Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate's like he's, he's like fuck you. I see no trouble with this man. I, uh, he was just following orders. He, he was the one like secretly behind closed doors actually defending Jesus. I think so. <laughs> uh, all right. With that being said, yeah. So we've assembled. We're getting to Pontius Pilate more later. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, we've assembled a terrific show for you tonight. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Centered around <laughs> weed and Baja Blast. Exactly. Exactly. Mundo. Those are the uh, the sponsors here on the show. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about places where people eat people. Hmm. Um, huh. I'm gonna... Is it on AMC? Where they got The Walking Dead? <laughs> Take a bite out of this zombie. <laughs> oh. Uh. A little sassy. What is it? It's like when like hell is show. full, to yeah. full the dead will walk the earth. <laughs> oh my is that what God. it is? I do, my motto is more kill them all, let God sort them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's kind of the more the Viet Cong <laughs> mentality yeah. right there. I'm real there. anti-VC. No, mm. I'm just joking. Yeah. Just joking all you Vietnamese people. Charlie can't surf. All right. Uh, we're going to oh be discussing other kin. Other kin are people, too, pe- people. Other kin? So, yeah. please, leave your bigotry at the Skyrim door. Skyrim kin? I'm going to be telling you how this Dennis Rodman show. broke his dong. Mm. Not once, I mean, not twice. I have a guess. <laughs> but thrice. Oh no! It's not for it's yeah. It's not for the fan of heart. It's obvious. Or uh, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, Detroit Pistons black. fans. You know he was traded, I like and that. I don't know if they ever got over that to the to the Bulls. Forty years after he leaves our team, let's break his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get in into any of that yeah. stuff, it's only rock and roll. This is oh. gonna be some good shit. But I like it. Like Greatest it, like segue it. Yes, I do. ever. Yeah. And this is a sure. continuation of sorts. Last episode, we yeah. talked about Mr. Ozzy Osbourne. Or, I guess it would have been two episodes ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Could you're right. Uh, well, we discussed Oz, Ozzy uh, got into a, like a gross-out competition with, with the Motley crew. Oh, yeah, the crew. And ended up snorting a, land, or, uh, a line of ants and then... Drinking a piss puddle, his of his own doing, doing making his own create his own brewing. Uh, and this, strangely enough, also has to do with urine. Oh my god! Uh, this a, it's that time. Are you sure it's not Chuck Berry. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Chuck Berry, guitar god. A lot of people yeah. don't know that when he wasn't in god. Tempus, uh, tennis, Memphis, tennis, <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee. I can't even say it. <laughs> I'm just choking on it because I have to get to the joke. All right, yeah. he's a piss god, people. Yeah, not only guitar god. That yellow god. stuff, he was slurping it back up. But that, this Wouldn't isn't about that. Would he never do it in Memphis, though? He, like, swore it off. That, well, that was his home state. That's the home so, state. Yeah. He didn't want to, like... You never eat shit in your own shit backyard. Shit you eat or whatever, yeah. <laughs> but when he was out on the road, my goodness, the... Have you ever seen it his... It was a piss hurricane. Have you ever seen Chuck Berry's hands, like, the size of his hands? I imagine they're, they're huge. They're frightening. Because he he's has, extremely good at guitar he has, and probably has a huge uh, banana fingers. Does he? Yes. He has a... I would say a banana dick, but it's probably even bigger than a banana, so... Yeah, I mean, a banana like a tree, plantain. more like it. Yeah, banana tree dick. Banana fingers. So Great, talented guy. Did I say enough about how much I love the guy? <laughs> yeah, we, we did. I we went a little light on that I one. I don't want to speak ill of the death, though. Maybelline. Why can't you be true? He's the only guy that got away with the My Dingling song. Yeah. That he just... I, it's... I can never get over that, that that's, like, turned arguably his, his signature song. Yeah, he turned it into a sig- uh, single. It is like, and he turned it into a single. People, like, know him for that. Yeah. People of a certain age. And, like... <laughs> it's like a polka song. Yeah. It's, like, this weird novelty song that he probably made up on the spot, like, live, where he just was, like, faded while he was performing. He's like, like, oh, damn. Drunk I, and stone. I owe the company, and, like, another I'm record. I'm just going to start singing about my cock. <laughs> I'm going to sing about, they say, <laughs> write about what some, you know. <laughs> there are probably some, like, super hot girls, like, at the front of the stage, and he's just like, I'm going to start singing about my cock. They'll love this. <laughs> you know, I think the girls will like my cock just yeah. as much as I do. Let's find out. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, this story is oh, about Chuck. that time that Ozzy Osbourne, yeah, R.I.P. Chuck. About that time that Ozzy Osbourne sort of urinated on the Alamo. Oh, my God. You know the picture? This is I remember Bark at the, the Moon Alamo. 80s era Ozzy with oh, the mullet. yeah, with the mullet. Right, which I love. At the Moon. It was like a perm. That's All right. right. He, if you ever see Tina Turner's hair in yeah. Mad Max Escape from Thunderdome, she has the same hairdo oh, as Ozzy Osbourne, Ozzie, right? Yeah. You know, Mick Jagger kind of got, like, that same haircut. It's the like shag or something. It, like, it's yeah. kind of... The shag. It's like a mullet. Mullet thing. Kind of solid snaky ass. Yeah, yeah, solid <laughs> Kind of looks like, uh, like a baseball player or hockey player. Oh, yeah. You probably played for the A's or hockey the Baltimore haircut. Orioles yeah, exactly. or something. All right, so Ozzy, uh, let's see. You're a rock star, stumbling around an unfamiliar city while wearing your Sean. girlfriend's manager's dress. All right, so real quick. Sean. The last uh, Ozzy story we did, yes. he was wearing a dress then, Yes, he too. was. And I believe they, if I remember correctly, 
He had taken it from a woman's purse. Mm. The dress was in her purse. So there's a flair for the dramatic is what you're telling yeah. me. Uh, yeah, listen to that, episode 55, <laughs> we talk about. I just kind of shocking you that it's just if he gets Ozzie. drunk, if you if yeah. you reach the threshold of drunkness with Ozzy, yeah, he's just he's, gonna put on a dress. Yeah, he's gonna be in a dress. <laughs> you better put on a poncho because yeah. he's gonna be pissing all over. Because it's place. gonna get wet. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! It's like Splash Mountain anywhere near oh Ozzy. You just bring oh, the poncho little... with you. Yeah. <laughs> there's always the one kid there that gets when you're not hit over you're by the, the wave. Um, okay, so. <laughs> So he's wearing his he's, he's wearing his girlfriend slash manager's dress. Uh, it's not Sharon. I think it might be Sharon. Sharon. Right. It says you feel the call of nature, and not knowing where the nearest gas station or hotel is, relieving yourself on a nearby statue seems like a good idea in your drunken state. When you're barking at the moon, it does. <laughs> I'm going through changes right now. Chris. Oh my god. Uh, but in the middle of the afternoon with all sorts of people around, it's a good way to get yourself in trouble. And that's what famously happened to Ozzy Osbourne. In he sounds a little paranoid. In San Antonio, Texas. Oh, the Riverwalk. San Antonio, oh, the Riverwalk. On, uh, on February 19th, 1982. Oh, wow. Over the years, the story has taken... So Tim Duncan wasn't there? <laughs> Who's the Admiral? Greg Popovich. Uh, yeah. Over the years, the story has taken on mythical proportions, stating that Osborne urinated on the walls of the Alamo. Osborne uh, and David Robinson, San Antonio Spurs star, urinated on the Alamo. They took turns. They tag teamed <laughs> the Alamo. Seven foot center, David Robinson. The mission that was the site of the famous battle during the state's War of Independence in 1836. Wow. God bless those brave yeah. men. Hey, Sean. I remember that, Alamo. <laughs> and just a state it was a fight state. for independence. Oh, yeah. It's considered Why to be did sacred. I care? They fought our kind out of their country <laughs> by that kind point. English, Englishman race. Englishman. <laughs> it's considered... To be sacred ground and a symbol of Texan pride. That's right. Only it's not true. Oh. <laughs> so just ro- so, turn off your whatever your d- device bad. you're listening to this and yeah. just, you know. Just drop it in the toilet. Just go outside. Uh, no, it says, <laughs> only it's not true. An unnamed guide at the Alamo told the guy at Boston Herald in uh, 2003. If he had, the police wouldn't have arrested him, he said. They would have beaten the shit out of him within an inch of his life. Jeez. The truth is that Ozzy urinated on the Alamo Cenotaph. Or how do you pronounce that? The Alamo Dome? Cenotaph? Stadium? I've never seen it. Cenotaph? Okay. Yeah, I don't Cenotaph know. Cenotaph is the 60 foot high statue erected in 1939 to honor the 189 Texans who died there. Oh, wow. Cenotaph is adjacent to the mission in the Alamo Plaza. This is just an uh, urban okay. legend. Yeah, it's like it's, it's sort of, of that, true. Part of that. Oh, okay, I see. It's not technically the Alamo, but it's part of like the tourist site. Yeah, it's like the, adjacent from the yeah. Alamo. That yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's still yeah tourist spot, but he wasn't like rubbing his shit on the walls. No, like it, where Davy Crockett died or anything. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, on uh, his raccoon skin cap. He ruined that coon skin piss. cap. Oh my god! That's the only good one they had. A good old, old Davy Crockett. Crockett. Yeah, he's a he's a big hero of ours at this podcast. Yeah, if you haven't already, if you weren't able to tell just by our style of talking, we're men are men are more. You can't even say it. John Sutter, also another mm. hero of mine. Albert S- Schweitzer, Sutter I loved him too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Albert Schweitzer, so knowledgeable and true. <laughs> oh my <Remember>? god! <laughs> oh yeah, that fucking. He has a song. Yeah, Albert, our brother, peaceful and kind. That's what it is. Yeah. Albert. Albert Schweitzer was a God's gift to man. He helped the dark continent of Africa, Craig. Did he, Albert? Schweitzer? I learned all about it. Yeah, the the books, mysterious history continent. books. Wow. It's a dark place. All right, so <laughs> Osborne was arrested for public urination and <laughs> intoxication. And was, re- and was reportedly released on a $40 bond. That's not I'm so bad. I'm bloody under arrest on a $40 bond. 40 pounds. No, dollars. I couldn't get drunk for an hour. It was oh miserable. Where's, uh, where's Bill Ward? <laughs> Can he get me out of... Bail me out, love? It was posted by Jack Orban, promoter for Oz- Ozzy's concert at the 
Helms Fair that night. However, the concert was marred by fans who threw rocks because they were unable to get into the sold-out show. Oh, 24 wow. people were Box arrested the for their part in the riot. Oh, wow. The combination of these two events Aussie. prompted a decision by the city council to ban Ozzy Osbourne oh. from performing oh, again in nice. San Antonio. Now, that's fucking awesome. They need a awesome. bigger venue for him. Yeah. <clears throat> Ten years later, Ozzy... David Robinson would have let him do it at his house. Oh, the, the Admiral? The Admiral, Oh, yeah. much, much worse stuff than that. Uh, ten years after Ozzy Osbourne was pardoned after he donated ten grand to the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. Uh, they maintain yeah. and manage the Alamo, which remains one of the most popular tourist attractions in Texas. Yeah, that's right. Yep, good shit. All right, everybody. Uh, that, that cowardly Britain came over here and pissed on our. I'm getting our really holy tired land of these British America. musicians. It's like yeah. they haven't really done a lot for no, the United they States, if you think about it. No, I can't even think of any British bands. Mm, brilliant. Off the top of my head. All right, well... Uh, the Culture Club, are they British? Do you really want to hurt me? <laughs> you hang up first. <laughs> no, you hang up first. Now I'm just going to tell you motherfucking niggas straight out the dump. Don't fuck with my motherfucking president. Do you understand me? Nigga, we ride with Donald Trump over here, niggas. Draco... We ain't playing with you motherfucking niggas. You understand me? Keep my motherfucking president name out your mouth. Fuck, nigga. Any motherfucking nigga, white, black, Chinese, Mexican, if you want to build that wall, let them build it. You motherfucking niggas out there think it's a guy, I'm going to go to war behind Donald Trump. That's right. Do you understand me? We're going to go to motherfucking war, Trump. You got some motherfucking soldiers, boy, right here on your side, boy. Right here, we coming. Drake goes, talking about we going around. What's that little nigga down there in Baton Rouge's name? Nigga, keep my motherfucking president out of your motherfucking mouth, nigga. Talking about you got a hundred on the drum. C-Cup, you just got your tennis done. Main, main music, nigga. Boy, I got a hundred in this motherfucker, boy. And I just got the motherfucking chopper done, nigga. Keep my motherfucking president name out your mouth. If you don't like it, bitch, catch me outside. How about that? Raindrops are falling on my head. And just like the guy who's been up to. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Let's Spend the Night Together. Nothing seems to fit. Oh. When you make a point, you make a point, you know? That man's very patriotic. Very passionate. You can't say it right now, but I'm actually standing up saluting him. Yeah, and I'm down on one knee. <laughs> Godspeed, sir. Godspeed. We have flags, American flags, covering the walls in here. Speaking of America, <laughs> the next segment is none other than mm. living in America. Oh. Ah, the hair. Hit it, a hit it. America. All right. This is a segment that we like to talk about. Pop culture. It's an accurate song, too, because we are living in America. We're, we're going to tell you about just how bad it is out on those streets. Yeah, here in America. Virulent. I hope a, oh you know, a fucking wave comes and washes it all away. Oh, my God. Washes yeah. all the scum off it's the It's like streets. that movie, the way New York is portrayed in that movie, Taxi Driver. Mm. That is how all of America is in 2018. <laughs> yeah. All of it. That cyberpunk utopia that I was promised. I see the shining It state. hasn't happened yet. I'm a proud yeah. uh, Blood Gulch cyberpunk? veteran, too. So that I think oh, that I can deal with Gulch. it. Yeah, wow. Halo. Yeah, you, I served a couple terms. I'm in Blood Gulch myself. I saw your bravery out there. And the pit. <laughs> I tested my metal on the pit. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, so... Uh, John, are you there? <clears throat> Cortana. Okay, sorry. And Cortana was very sexy. Oh. Did you ever see that movie? She trying to do the Halo music. Where Joaquin Phoenix is trying to fuck his phone the whole time. Oh yeah, it's like her or something. Yeah, is that just and what eventually would become Cortana? Basically, yeah. yeah. I just stick the charging cable in my phone. I've never tried to put my dick. <laughs> I just tie it off around around my pecker and just oh my just God. see what happens. 
Or turns blue, whatever. He's just smacking his dick. With Call nine one one. Side of his phone. <clears throat> yeah, he's a good actor. Siri, I fucking love you. Have you ever it's noticed? Like, please that repeat. <laughs> I fucking love you. Whenever he tries to be serious in a movie, he whispers. Oh, uh, he whispers. You have to be very quiet. I used to be a baseball player, and these aliens are afraid of water. <laughs> oh no. All right, oh, so. Simpson, what should I do? Macaulay Culkin's cool little twist. brothers over here. I didn't even know any of the Culkin brothers survived. I'm glad survived to see... Survived the Michael Jackson tragedy? Yeah, I'm glad to see him getting work. Yeah, I know. He used to it's good. run it's through good. him like, you know... Uh, just like a hot knife through butter. Yeah, scary. Oh my god. Um, it's like that song Thriller. But... Somehow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, so living in America, we're going to be talking about other kin. America. Oh, other kin. Other kin in America. Other kin in America. And, of course, this this article comes courtesy of Vice Magazine. Because oh, why yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, they're up to... They're the old edge. tricks. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is amazing journalism. Just think, if you will, a moment. That you went for, you went to college, you spent daddy's money, yeah. you got your journalism degree, and now you're writing articles about like this. That you're about to a hear. brilliant article, yeah, yeah, and you're thinking, ah, maybe I can get in a Wapo or Huffington, Huffington Post Huff or something, Poe? or Buzzfeed, the maybe. Times. Oof. So what publication is this? The Vice dot com. Yeah, oh, might as well be. Yeah, that boy. Vice, so they're like, okay, any normal <laughs> news story, like, forget, and instead, yeah. like, any freaky change shit it into something freaky. Exactly. Or some really niche thing that one person does, act like it's this new trend, <laughs> and we all need to be, like, open minded to it. Mm. <laughs> it's a brave new world. Yeah. All right, so other can are people, too. Ju- they just identify as non humans. We mm. talk to the internet residents who feel more like foxes, dragons, and cats. Than members of Homo sapiens. Mm. Well, don't make fun of them. Don't call them Homo sapiens. Yeah, it's a little uncalled for. I mean, it is 2018. Um, yeah. That's All right. So, other can are I mean, people who identify as partially or entirely non human. Mm. You ever feel like that? N- no, I never what? have felt like that. I've never. I don't, Come on, you can be honest here I don't on the even podcast. Like, Identify is kind of just like if you could be to me. well here yeah. have a, we'll go through a little you know <laughs> a little, very nice but a little demonstration yeah. if you could be an animal what yeah. kind of animal would you be probably first thing be, that comes to mind yeah I would probably be a eagle soaring on the warm air currents uh, of America <laughs> I'd be a sperm whale you'd be a sperm. Whale. Swimming up the fallopian No, tube? silly goose. Yeah. I'd be a whale. I'd be a big, giant, beautiful creature. A big whale? In the water. Whale sperm? Oh, sperm whale. Sperm sperm whale. All right. That's cool. That would suck, though, if, you wanted to, if I wanted to, you know, live my dream as a sperm whale. I couldn't do it on no. dry land. No. You it wouldn't didn't. make any sense. Even if you identified that way? If do I, you identify If as? I was that entirely. Oh, just if you were one? Every it's part of me. And I mean on a metaphysical level. Yeah. On a paraphysical a level. Pataphysical. You know, it's it's really very... I, I guess it's just the patriarchy up to their old way, old habits. That's again. probably what it is. We you live know, in... Because it's like a sperm whale can't even live in the city on land with us people. Mm. Uh, and that is we live in a society. Fair. We yeah. live in a society today. It's 2018, people. I know Donald Trump's in office, but sperm whales should be able to yeah. walk around uh, you know, that and go Trump, to the Walmart uh, with us and rent cars and everything. Um, so, yeah, there can are people who identify as partially or entirely non-human. A I'm dragon. a gorilla, but just from the... in between my knees and my waist. It's very specific. Yeah. A, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's not like just a hand or something. It's or, just... Or just like the bone structure of a no, girl. Just, no, just, huh. just kind of in that area. I don't know. Nothing too special about that area. That no, no. I'm actually impressed. That's a regular part of the body. Uh, so, but this is a dragon, a lion, a fox. Name it. There's I have a problem with one, one of those is not an animal. A dragon 
It's yeah. definitely not an animal. Uh, <laughs> it is. It is a creature of lore. I mean, unless a Komodo dragon. <laughs> I identify as a Komodo dragon. Uh, there is probably someone out there who identifies or feels like they're more these things than they are human. The yeah. other kin community can be found lurking on Reddit, Tumblr, TV tropes, and other online forums. <laughs> and that is shocking to no one. Yeah. The popularity of the other kin phenomena seems to have been steadily increasing, particularly on no. Tumblr since I mean, 2012. In in a way where it's like we're talking about it, mm-hmm. but not in the way that like this is just some people <laughs> just think they're this. Some that people like rock sense. climbing and they like to play yeah. uh, wiffle ball or something. This is. Oh my God. But what? Um, I mean, it's like what does it mean? Identify like if you just like I don't care if you want to. Like, be a unicorn or pretend you're a unicorn or whatever? Like, of course, that's... Are people being stopped from pretending that they're animals? We gotta, we gotta they're get, allowed to do that. We gotta unless, do a, you know, a deep, deep psyche meld maybe, into the story. It's maybe an issue when you want pe- everybody, before you meet them, to, like, already know you're a dragon I'm a wolf. or a unicorn. Call or, me... Or a wolf. Mr. Wolf. Bark at the moon. I listen to Bark at the Moon by Ozzy so much that get me I think I'm a wolf. Correct headspace. Wolf skin. <laughs> <laughs> so much it turned me into a wolf. <laughs> I'm wolf skin now. Man, that I just Zar- identify as that me. Zach Wild solo. I think it's what put me oh over the edge. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what does it mean to truly believe you're non-human? Do people genuinely wake up one day and think that they are a fox, or is this just a bizarre form of escapism? Is it body dysmorphia or fantasy? We always talk about body dysmorphia we on the show. We do talk about that on the show. A lot. Yeah. Maybe a little more than we should, but yeah. we're not scared to uh, to go exploring yeah. here on the show. No. Uh, so I already says, was open about my, my area of my body. <laughs> that it's very animal-like. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Groin yeah. area. We're just sharing today. Yeah. This is a safe space. So it says, I spoke to John on Reddit, a 19-year-old from Knoxville, oh, no. USA. Doe. Known on the web as... Big n- Cock John. Uh, no Slavic. No Slavic. Uh, he introduced himself. I'm a red foxkin who was, as we call, awkward about a year ago. He said but that... Now. Or, excuse me. I am <laughs> a red foxkin who was, as we call, awakened. Oh, about oh, a year oh, ago. It was an awakening okay. of sorts. Yeah. He said that the awakening felt, quote, at the very least... Uh, Orgasmic. <laughs> relieving. Because everything seemed to come together for me. Because I put fox food on my balls and went to the zoo and had a fox nibble off of it. You know, a lot of people, <laughs> they'd probably get the wrong idea about a petting zoo, but oh I found God. it pretty educational. At my climax, I realized... Why, I am one of you. I'm but a fox. <laughs> He's just face down, like face, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just face to face with the fox. I'm one of you. I'm one of you. I found out. I finally. Do you I think he understand. he watched that Wes Anderson movie too many times and it turned uh, him into the a fox? Fantastic Mr. Fox. I think that's what's Ken? happening. Yeah, the sequel is going to be the Fantastic Mr. Foxkin. Oh, you know what's <laughs> weird. I saw a picture on our... Check out our Instagram, by the way. Yeah. And um, there was a picture of some troops that were very important to our country's Salute survival. the troops. God bless the yeah, troops. And uh, they were a big part of keeping us free by the Freedom's name good. of uh, Soldier Private uh, Polly Shore oh, and yeah. Dick <laughs> from In the Army Now, which was in 1994. When I, was, when I like saw that picture... Um, I saw this article that was from 2012, which six years ago now, and it said <laughs> the article, the headline was, which wasn't very nice, Polly Shore and Andy Dick collaborating again to work on trying to make an In the Army Now sequel that no one asked for. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, fuck you. Except me. I would be I so damn, out of all their movies, for some reason that one seems like you could, maybe because it's the two of them. 
Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool, and that was six years ago, so I guess that fell through. And maybe they can be, like... Probably a script, though. They'd be out of the army by now, so maybe yeah. they're, like, uh, soldiers like of fortune or something, like mercenaries. Oh, yeah, like mercenaries, yeah. And then they go overseas, and maybe they're in Libya yeah. or something, trying to crack down on the slave trade there. Oh, my God. And, you know, shit goes haywire. Andy Dick has to blow some guy to, to defuse oh a bomb God. or something. I can see it on the page yeah. right now. And David Allen Greer. I can't, can't believe anything that's happening. Everything I can't believe it. Him out. Um, There's a scorpion in my boob. <laughs> I can't believe there's a scorpion in my boob. All right, back to the, to the fox skin. says, I started getting odd dreams where I would change physically into a fox. Hmm. And they were very realistic, honestly. And after a while, in real life, it felt quite real. Like I actually had a tail. I actually had ears. I mean, he heard, I mean, I mean, fox ears. I'll agree with that. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Uh, and I actually had paws. Huh. At, <laughs> at first, it was that one of those... That would make it very hard to do anything. Yeah. No opposable <laughs> thumbs. <laughs> make it just make a phone call. Everything would be thumbs. so awkward. Yeah. Uh, this, you know, the, that's what kind of sucks about this society is that it's not yeah. built for other kind of people. For humans with paws. Or, I guess he's not a human, whatever the fuck this stupid freak This is, is a fa- Hey, come on. <laughs> hey. Oh, hey. I'm not, sorry, I flew off the handle a little bit. I let off the, the brake and... Uh, my mistake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's understandable. Uh, he says, at first it was one of those things I freaked out over. It's kind of like how Craig just freaked out. Yeah. And then after a while, it was like, ah, I just, I'm, oh, I'm just you gonna. Tell it's just like, it doesn't mean anything. Even to him, it doesn't mean anything. Well, no, listen, he says, ah, I'm just going to play with my tail for a minute. Oh, and they got distracted in his description. Ah, hang on. <laughs> it's, it's, he just throws it up a cheetah. I'm going to eat some insects and berries and other things that Fox eat. Uh, okay, so he says, every, every so often, John says he gets mental shifts. Hmm. I could just be at home, and all of a sudden, click, the fox part of me just kind of comes out for a while. Huh. And then it goes. It wow. goes, it goes, it goes. Good thing. Oh, my bad. Oh, my God. Sounds, that was fucking, that was forced. My goodness. All right. Sounds a bit like an elaborate horror story, kind of like Kafka's Metamorphosis or Cronenberg's The Fly. <laughs> but the sen- I've seen those movies too. <laughs> oh my god! But the sensation John experienced with his tail has been identified by scientists. More like thing or the thing. These scientists with their science. Oh, yeah. Um, compared it to the phantom limb sensation. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah. Is that where people end up like chopping off their legs and stuff? Feel like they yes. still have it, or or they get pain. And I've heard it reverse too, where people oh, think they that they're amputees feel like or something. They don't have one, yeah, or like they feel like yeah, it's been removed, mm-hmm. but it's still there, and they feel like it's like a dead limb, like it's not part of. Or the body. there's there there's people. It's a it's a form of body dysmorphia where they have you know they're like an able bodied person. And they think, oh, I shouldn't have legs. And they cut off their legs. Oh, they, yeah, they, actually get them removed. Yeah. yeah. It, I, we're getting into some really interesting territory right now. Yeah. Um, okay. You well, just need some, some level-headed guys like <laughs> yeah, to like, yeah, the, take, on take you through. We've been here before. We'll, we'll be your guy. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll suss all this out for you. Yeah. While some other can identify as animal, others identify with the animal in more of a spiritual way. This is kind of mm. more of my story. I'm more of a spiritual kind of guy. Yeah. This is the case of Rina Gotch, an 18-year-old lionkin who wishes oh, to ra- no. remain anonymous. Very smart, actually. Very smart, my man. Yeah. Uh, he says, I feel a special connection with the lion. I feel like I demonstrate many of the same characteristics as the animal. It's mostly a secret in my day-to-day life, but the traits that I share with the lion do help me. And uh, all the other people in my pride love me, and we get along great. When people said, asked me if I was going to pride, and I said yes... Oh, my God. I think they, d- they misunderstood Oh, me. my God. I was talking about my lion can pride. In pagan they religions... They stared at me with a blank look on their face. <laughs> 
says that in pagan religions of the past, it wasn't uncommon to believe that humans would be born as animals. No, so of the not. idea that I was in a past life a lion is not as far fetched as some would think. Um, your example <laughs> you used was pagans. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, it, you know it, here in the United States, there's a lot of pagan churches around. Yeah, right? I mean, there's so one huge. just down the street. It's like maybe I'm a a bird jackal god. Well, actually, you didn't know this, but in ancient Egypt, five thousand years ago, they were one doing... guy was sort of that. <laughs> yeah, so there was that's a Ra what I am. or whatever. So yeah. yeah, it's like, well, yeah, I think they were a little off the mark with their religion. Not to judge, but. We'd, help, we'd hate to shame here. Yeah. We don't want to shame Egypt. Any Egyptians no. listening? Any people that You're are You're just fine the way you are. Their religion is ancient Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever still practices that. Pagans. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Fiona, or Thief, 34, from the UK, is not other kin herself, but participates frequently in other kin forums, which is very, very weird. But participate... Wow, I bet she they really appreciate her input. Well, this is better than cable shit. I mean, this For is her, like, yeah, it's it, like just get on the forum and yeah, exactly. They're entertaining. Yeah, it's like maybe <laughs> maybe we shouldn't ask you what you think because you're like exploiting these people. <laughs> I yeah, she like sells them tails. And yeah, all that shit. yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I have some ears. You said that you were a fox. I have some perfect. Oh fans, my god! But... Yeah, six ninety nine if you buy two. <laughs> Yeah, six hundred ninety nine dollars. Yeah. But you can these have are two really high yeah. quality. I mean, yeah, it's they're from Indonesia. Oh my god! Uh, she says, "I know some other can very personally." Oh, she's a size queen, and it's oh very hard to put into words. But you can tell there's something different. It's not something tangible. It's just qual a quality about them. So, P so what she just said mm. is the people that think that they're animals are different. Mm. Than other people, it's not a tangible thing. It's just a quality, though. It's it's not tangible. It's like um, you know, like a made up bullshit kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's but I really respect it, and and this is their way of life. It's a great way to get laid and meet people. Oh my God. It's a busy world these days. Yeah. Thief search long and hard, but never oh, awakened. Quote unquote. I wish I had an awakening. Awakening. Oh my god. I tried a lot of the kinds of experiences yeah, well, people were talking about. Like guided meditation, but I just didn't get any anywhere near it. Why didn't she just drop acid or L S D or like Yeah, instead like, of going, I think that I'm gonna turn into an animal <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, Old Fiona. Is it Fiona Apple? Oh, wouldn't and that be her, great? That would be a great her twist. Her is an apple. She <laughs> believes that she's an apple. And she just wants people to eat her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. When they go low, we go high. <laughs> she, uh, so, but, uh, okay. Who said that? Oh, Donald Trump, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a quote God, God Emperor Trump. Mm -hmm. All right, so awaken. I tried a lot of the things. <laughs> she was saying guided meditation, but just didn't get anywhere near me. She tells me. I think it's because she don't uh, have mental illness. Instead, she <laughs> defines herself as a furry. The definition of a furry is not fixed, but is generally thought of as someone who likes fictionalized anthropomorphic figures in dresses up in fursuits. I've, yeah, I, yeah. We, I've dealt with this shit so, much, so often now. Or yeah. weirdness that I can look at anthropomorphic yeah, the word and know, like, oh yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So do they like get people like that get fucking turned on when they go to like Disneyland and shit and like damn that well, big mouse. Does it I mean this isn't even that bad, but I've read stories. I mean let's just let's just leave it there and, and I guess kind of like digest what Let's oh um, everyone <clears throat> pause your device. Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> dwell on that. I um, the whole idea of the awakening really interests yeah. me, yeah, and because an because Fief said that she could not yeah. get an awakening, no. and that she wanted it really bad. Yeah. yeah, some girls just can't get their awakening. Like the right guy has to kind of learn how to please mm. each individual woman. Has her own way of kind of being pleased, awakened. A lot of a lot of people think that the yeah. awakening is a myth. They can't yeah, find it. A, you can't find it. Uh, but crazy. I say otherwise. Awakening, I think yeah. it's a bunch of hullabaloo. 
Yeah, and it's a shame when you... Because men, is a lot easier to find your awakening. Mm. And, <laughs> I remember uh, reading this. The common minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and thinking, ah, oh, it's not that bad. It's not that weird. <laughs> the other kind stuff? Yeah, yeah, but it's it's pretty strange. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Well, uh, it's like you know, yeah. It's very internet culture. It I mean, totally I don't see culture. this ever existing. I know it's, it's like twenty years ago, thirty years it's ago. Fluff or what is it? Furry. Furry. Is fur- other kind. Fluffy is that comedian, that terrible comedian. <laughs> is furry? Um, sorry, Gabriel Iglesias. Is furry? It's different than other kin. Other kin, yes. Because the furry gets into the suit. Yeah, and that's it's a whole. Like, like, that's true, and they're they're like ceremony and procedure, right there. Yes, and they want to kind of like live in that skin, almost like an actor or something. Yes, but not in the way where they feel like I am like this. I am Sam. It's more. Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's more like this alter. It's like Batman. It's a fucking yeah, weird, in a weird way. If instead, you, but instead of a superhero, you just watch fetish videos. And <laughs> yeah, it's like it, Batman. If your parents were never killed, you yeah. weren't rich, and then right. you just spent all your just hung out with Catwoman money and time looking at cat boys yeah. and getting and jacking fox off on suits Catwoman suit on the internet. So and having to dry clean your suits because you and Catwoman. That being said, if we have any any. Uh, Followers or listeners yeah. right now that that are other kin or furries or anything in between, just uh, yeah, send us a it, DM if you'd ever like to be on the show. Yeah, just sort of interview or something. I'd love just to shoot to the shit because I I really like to just understand. I want to yeah. know what the awakening's about. Yeah, and I want one. You want one? So with yeah, that, I mean, go ahead and and do your thing. You know, it's like <laughs> what do you. What do you What's need from me? You? Yeah, exactly. I need a license. <laughs> so, All right, yeah, we'd love to talk to a real, real the real life. legit thing. Yeah, other kin, especially the if real McCoy, a, a Jack Russell Terrier kin. <laughs> yeah, we got one of those over here now. All right, we'll be back right after this. He come to me with money in his hand. He offered me. I didn't ask him. I wasn't knocking someone's door down. I was running from that. When I got out, I was in that. I was already through that. I had that. I had the studio. I went to the studio. I went to Vox Studios. I had it all. And I looked at it, and I said, this is a bigger jail than I just got out of. I don't want to take my time going to work. I got a motorcycle and a sleeping bag and 10 or 15 girls. What the hell I want to go off and, do, and, and go to work for? Work for what? Money? I got all the money in the world. I'm the king, man. I run the underworld, guy. I decide who's does what and where they do it at. What am I going to run around and act like I'm some teeny bop for somewhere for somebody else's money? I make the money, man. I roll the nickels. The game is mine. Woo! Welcome back, everybody. Let's put the night together. He sounded like he was going to be like, I was born in the darkness, molded by it. <laughs> By the time I saw the light, I was a man. By then, it was only blinding. By hey, everybody. Shadows. Thank you for uh, continuing to stay with us. Yeah. Let's put that together. We appreciate it. We played a little inspirational. We got a lot, of, a lot of good show left for you. Yeah, it's let's already just, been really insightful. Let's just Learned start lot, it on probably. up. And mm-hmm. a little segment we call mm-hmm. Take My Breath Away. Song. Every time we play it for the segment, I start getting teary eyed. Start dancing. Woo! Get real teary eyed. Because <clears throat> the love that, you know, the actors portrayed in that movie, the couple, the main couple in that movie, they portrayed this love. Talk about relationship so goals. real. You know, Val Kilmer and Tom Cruise. <laughs> it was beautiful. I'd never seen anything like that on the silver no. screen. I mean, that volleyball. I've never seen sexual tension like the volleyball yeah. scene. I oh, didn't God. know a volleyball could symbolize so much. No. It symbolized orgasm being bounced back and forth between Val <laughs> and Tom. Just the lots of sexual tension ping pong and off. Yeah, of yeah. Like Who's some... gonna finish first? Iceman or <laughs> Maverick? They keep edging. <laughs> All right, the Goose. Goose, I, Goose is going to finish first. <laughs> we both went for him. Sorry, Goose. Rest in peace. All right.
All right, so... But for, this isn't going to be about Top Gun. This yeah, is just our love romance. This isn't about homosexual <coughs> sex no. in Top Gun the movie. This time. This time. <laughs> this is about Dennis Rodman and the... Mm, and okay. Quote, oh. there, there was blood everywhere. Oh, my Lord. Dennis Rodman on how he broke his penis three times during sex. What a quote to start it up with. There was Good fucking stuff. blood everywhere. Dripping down the walls. <laughs> it was like that elevator in The Shining. <laughs> it was like the back of the car in Pulp Fiction when they blew his brains out. Oh, my God. All right, um, it was like the briefcase in Pulp Fiction when they opened it. That's what Rodman's dick. <laughs> it shined gold. No, I don't know. But Any wait, so girl he... that takes down his pants. <laughs> anybody that looks at him, they're like, is, 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 are we cool? Do we got it? And she oh just turns God. back, yeah. Huh? We got oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah we got it. <laughs> so uh, Dennis Rodman has revealed in graphic detail how he broke his penis <laughs> like three, three different times during sex. Wow. Not during the same sex. No, no. Uh, this is three different. Sex capade. Three well. different lovely ladies, lucky individuals. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. sure their oh, fathers ladies. are very, really? very happy with yeah. their life choices. Big Chicago Bulls fans? The biggest. <laughs> <laughs> Not as big as a friend of the show, Kim Jong-un. Mm. That that man, he is something He's else. Brave guy. Brave guy. Yeah. All right, so yes, that's three different times on three separate occasions. Occasions. Yeah. Okay, so in a video for Viceland, the basketball star revealed... The worm revealed the first incident the worm, occurred I on a boat in Dallas, Texas. But if you're going to break your dick, you don't want to do it on the high seas. No. You want to do it close to a hospital. Yeah. If possible. If, if I ever like am, am planning for the weekend, planning on breaking my dick, mm. I make sure that I'm definitely within a couple, couple hundred miles of a hospital. <laughs> Within uh, yelling range. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, usually in the parking lot of a hospital, because I know. Just in case my, yeah. I'm fucking and my, my, my dick breaks. Yeah. All right, so he says, me and my girlfriend, we were on the back of a boat in a king-size bed. And she said, I think I'm going to try something different. Oh. She told me to walk over there and told me to run. On all fours. <laughs> I just, want you to, head. I just want you to bark at my pussy, Dennis. <laughs> oh my god! Um, bark is... at the moon. Oh, to bring it so back. call back, people. <laughs> That's how the pros do it in the big yeah, leagues. That was big. That was a big moment. Uh, she said she told me to walk over there and told me to run and jump in her pussy. Oh my god! She said, "Walk over here, you little bitch." She slapped me in the face, <laughs> drew blood, and jump. And what'd she say? Dive into my pussy. Come over here. Get over here, Michael Phelps, and dive into this. <laughs> Run into my pussy, like <laughs> butterfly into this. Usain Bolt, <laughs> <laughs> like Usain Bolt. <laughs> Pretend it's the finish line, and you're running right, fucking blasting through it. Oh my god! All right, so he ran. He jumped. He heard a he, crunch. He didn't stick the landing. <laughs> and then he saw blood. Quote: oh. Blood everywhere. He never had a hard time dunking the basketball. Yeah, that's very, couldn't. very true. He's always very coordinated, one. even yeah, for a uh, big man. Yeah. That's so much skilled scoring-wise, but no. he could always take it off the glass. You know, he yeah. was there like for backs. the dirty work. Yeah. <clears throat> so he missed, he hurt, and all he knew was here to crunch, and then he just saw Blood. his vision went red. <laughs> he couldn't even see anything but a red, red light. Yeah, he said, she's screaming and screaming, oh my God, he's dead. He's like, what? Did I hurt your pussy? She's like, no, oh, I did brother. it again. Your thing is hanging off by a thread. He's like, this is why they traded me from the Pistons. Oh my I hurt God. somebody really I kept bad. Breaking my dick. Oh yeah, yeah. She's like, no, this time it's you. Uh, so he says, she's... is that why they call you the worm? <laughs> the thing's just hanging there, broken like a. Worm. Oh yeah, it's a night crawler. Uh, she's screaming and screaming. Oh my God, he's dead. The fifty-five year old recall. I said, no, honey, I just broke my dick. <laughs> it's like Kenny Powers. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting conversation that they had. And then look at the look at how ballsy he is right there with the scarf. He has like a Chris Jericho Ooh. scarf. Oh, my God. We're going to have um, to find that picture. That's some good yeah, stuff. Yeah, he looks pretty. And it, is yeah, that's that like I, post-op, like after the, <laughs> this, yeah, this is, after the injury? He yeah, didn't yeah. Care? He's good now. Okay, know. so that's Put incident one. Together. One. Uh-huh. That's incident one. 
Oh, that was the first. Yes. Oh, okay. He's like a cat. He has this dick has nine lives. <laughs> it's as curious as a cat, cat, too. Oh, my God. Uh, the second incident didn't involve whiskers. a boat, surprisingly. Go oh, figure. okay. Rodman had just finished weird. whining and dining a new lady called Tracy. <laughs> During dinner, she pulled out a book titled How to Suck Dick in Ten Different Ways. How to Break Your Dick <laughs> the Second Time. <laughs> How to Lose a Guy and Break Your Dick Ten <laughs> Different Ways. ways. Uh, uh, so how to suck dick? How to suck dick. Okay. Ten different ways. Oh, man. It's a coloring book. No. Uh, hightailing it back to the hotel room, things quickly took a turn. Next thing you know, she turns around and pushed me hard. He explained. Crack. Another one. Blood everywhere. I couldn't do anything. Oh, my God. Just, what was she like? I don't know. I guess she was she was sucking like his dick and he fell over. Back behind or yeah. something? Or I, what they're not saying is that Dennis... weird angle? Dennis tends to drink a lot of alcohol. Ah. Uh, so maybe yeah. if he didn't you know, have the best balance when he was yeah, getting yeah. his... And in the his third time... stuffed on. The third time was in the hotel room in... Uh, I forget the name of the city, North Korea, uh, yeah. after the exhibition basketball game. I can't even think. And I was think. given like 47 North Korean women. He was just on the pleasing. DMZ line, just yeah. like fucking D- North Korean prostitutes. <laughs> yeah, and breaking his dick. <laughs> um, okay, so he said, dish in even more details, he said, well, he could get, he could still get an erect, er, erect despite the injury. It Don't get straight. It just... It don't get makes sh- a 90 degree turn. It don't get straight. Oh, it don't get straight. And instead oh, looks like it. a big fucked up carrot. Dennis said this? Yeah. Dennis. It looks like Frosty the Snowman's nose. You know, oh he, has a, he has a carrot for a nose. The, Actually, so my dick looks like. just stands like next to him, to the left of him. And he can fuck her that way or something. <laughs> it just goes sideways. Oh, just slants. his hips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's slants. He likes to do it in parking garages. And oh, my. It always, right? <laughs> the tip always tends to point north. <laughs> That's why he knows where he's way. going. <laughs> All right. The third time happened during a similar yeah. situation. And how many more times has that happened? 25? 26? Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's just keep going then. It was no. That's how many <laughs> rebounds he had in a single game. Oh, okay. That's what I'm thinking of. He well, was his dick rebounded a couple. Okay, my bad. Was it was in New York. Same thing. We go to the hotel room and we're having sex and it ended up breaking. Oh no! So this <laughs> one was just like just... tired of explaining. Uh, it yeah. at this point. This one it was nothing special. It just breaks sometimes now. Yeah, it's at that point. You go to the hospital and my girlfriend is like, "Well, you know, he has a problem with his penis." The oh, woman God. comes up and says, "Oh, I'll be right back." She brought another doctor in and then another one. I swear to God, she just kept bringing in people. And they they told me I had a contused dick. penis. Make it matters worse. He's all uncontuse it. That's why I'm here, Doc. Call it what you want. Give me some pills and uncontuse it. (laughs) They told me I had a contused penis. Make it matters worse. His girlfriend got a call from one of the nurses the next day, threatening to sell the x-ray of Rodman's dick. Oh, my God. If they did not hand over $25,000. Wow, that's not cool. Rodman's response? What do you think Rodman's response was? Rodman probably put out a picture of his own dick. Rodman's response? He's like, I don't give a fuck. Sell him. Love, I love Rodman. And that's the end of the story. That is just... (laughs) Sell him. Oh, my God. (laughs) What is it? Chop one up for data. (laughs) Take that for data. (laughs) And then he just walks out. He drops the mic and walks off the court. Speaking of the NBA... Dennis Rodman, his dick is pretty much like Bill Walton's back was, like his whole career. (laughs) It's like, or or Greg Oden. Well, he's... He had the same problems that Rodman had, but in his dick. uh, Rodman is like a a peace ambassador at this point. Yeah. Everything that happened in in North Korea. Yeah. So weird. That is so weird. He's like an ambassador. I would have never guessed five years ago. dick ambassador. Yeah. And to top it off, his penis is entused. Contused? Uh, contused. I'm it's little... concussed? <laughs> As a concussion? <laughs> He's like, Doc, please, put oh some smell and salt. Try to wake it up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll be back right after this. Let's just start up I usually now. just watch porn while I... Porn it, help, it helps me think and be able to <clears> comment <throat> on all these stories. 
Helps me relax. Just have porn on in the background. Find yeah. peace in the world. I'm more centered when I'm hard. That's completely understandable. Tappity tap tap. Are we this on? Thing on? <laughs> Are we rolling right Tappity now? Tap. Hi, baby girl. <laughs> Everything's okay. I promise. I forgive you. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Everything's gonna be okay. I love you. I love you so much. I love you more than there are grains of sand on every beach of every planet, of every galaxy of the universe. I, I need you in my life. I need you more than humans need water and food to survive. You mean more to me than Home Depot means to Mr. Logerado. You mean more to me than just anything. You mean more to me than gold and diamonds mean to the greediest burglar. And you're just the most perfect, most beautiful girl in all of the world. And I love you so much. Hey, welcome back. Hey. 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 Let's spend the night together. <clears throat> that was kind of embarrassing. I'm sorry you guys had to hear that. Follow me. Hey. Last segment of the show. Follow me. Where's the good one? <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Yeah, a couple of trap gods. Or just some trap gods. Oh, well. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I promise we're gonna go out on uh, an amazing segment note? here. <laughs> Very low note. <laughs> on the lowest note possible. Yeah. If you're still listening to this, I'm sorry. I apologize it's... in advance. No, what did you say we're gonna go out with what? We're gonna go out on a high note, Craig. Mm. Not a low okay. note. Okay. High, like Cheech and Chong. Oh, <laughs> high. You know the yeah. only problem yeah. with uh, yeah. smoking weed is the marijuana culture, like Cheech yeah, and Chong. Yeah. And Seth yeah. Rogen movies and shit like that. Uh, <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, this one's cruising the world. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> That's right, ladies you and germs. We're gonna go around the world so you don't got to. Yeah. And we're gonna tell you a really interesting story. We found so we kind of what we do in this segment is like since you've last heard from us. Yes. Our last podcast, we've rounded up all the news in the entire world up to this point mm-hmm. right now, and we're gonna do it in these next few minutes. Yeah. Minutes, moments. So I hope you have a few moments to collect yeah. yourself because mm-hmm. it's it's gonna be a lot of information. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be like. Uh, what is it, like one episode of Game of Thrones or something? Yeah, exactly. I couldn't think of anything elaborate, of, so I uh, said Game of Thrones. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't watch TV. That's an exposition. Uh, I only TV? watch Suits and, and Billions. Those are the only shows? Those are the only ones. What about I, White Collar? I I White Collar, that ooh, that's a good one. Oh. And then what was the bash? The West Wing. What, oh, I'm that? a West Winger. Oof. Oh, no. Uh, don't get me started. And Will and Grace, obviously. Yeah, Suddenly Susan. Yeah. Suddenly Susan. <laughs> I don't understand oh, Suddenly Susan. What about what was the one that was like un, under Grace under fire? <laughs> oh no! And wasn't she the real like tough, rough and tumble gal? She looked like that that uh, hooker serial killer <laughs> that killed all those truck drivers. Oh my <laughs> you know, god! Was that about like lo- was it Lorreen something? <laughs> Lorena Bobbitt? Something like that. <laughs> I thought no, she- but oh, the I know who girl you're from Grace Under Fire, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Charlize Theron played her in Monster. Oh, is that who she plays in Monster? Yeah, I yeah. Fucking know that. It's that crazy She's hooker one- girl. She's That's like guys. If you're gonna get a hooker, you don't get him off the side of the road. Killer, right? Yeah, yeah. She's got the highest the, score. The I highest do believe. Kill count? Yeah. yeah, the highest KDA. Good for her. And they say women aren't <laughs> good at things. I yeah, mean, her KDA is great. Um, <laughs> well, what's your what? ratio? Yeah. What hey. are we talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> cruising the world. 
Oh, yeah. Great and we might as well. I mean, this is a bit of uh, gallows humor as well. And we're going to need it where we're going, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Because Just, this you is mean in the world where we're going? In the world. Because yeah. we're going to talk about places where it's still socially acceptable to eat human flesh. To eat ass. Oh. Eat, well, that's, that, that's, I mean. It's acceptable in yeah. my household. To play <laughs> it's a prerequisite to get oh through the door. God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> cannibalism might seem like the stuff of folklore in the primitive yeah. days of our ancestors but in this strange world there are still people who regularly consume human flesh other than Hannibal Lecter and we're not talking about people that like to suck dick all those uh. people are very nice people I never understood that when you, the insult like a cocksucker because a cocksucker yeah. is a good person yeah, it's like what a what a thing what a to great do. A yeah yeah cock. yeah. Why don't you just call me amazing while you're at it? Yeah, exactly. That's like saying, uh, "You gave amazing massages." <laughs> yeah, I'm really upset with these yeah. massages. <laughs> um, all right, so the practice has faded as more and more of the world has modernized, <clears throat> and previously isolated people groups, isolated people groups, huh? have established contact with surrounding communities, but cannibalism remains a staple among certain groups, even in the highly populated and trafficked regions. Huh. And a lot of those uh, places, for some reason, Grace Under Fire has, like, the highest ratings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. sitcom. Yeah. strange. That's hey. why I brought it up, I guess. But correlation is not causation, Craig. <laughs> no matter what they say. I'm sure the coloni- these yeah. colonizers, they have some... Blame in all of this. Yeah. Uh, the reasons vary from tribal warfare to attempts to gain enlightenment to defending one's family from harmful supernatural entities through the feast of a loved ones through the insides and outs. No matter the reasons, the result is the same. One man's flesh becomes <laughs> another man's food. This reminds me of that. Oh, uh, my God. Did you like that? Uh, this reminds <laughs> me of that. Oh, what it was that movie back in the day, like the early 2000s. It's it, not Insidious, but where it's uh, like this uh, search party. They're they're out in like the Western expansion. The Donner Party. So yeah, it's sort of like that. And they're eating <laughs> yeah. get dudes, and they're like, you know, if you if you eat a man, you take his energy, you take his strength. Oh wow! And it's super fucking creepy. And Guy Pierce ends up having to eat some guy. Oh, it's that fucking to movie? gain sustenance. Yeah, what's that movie called? I don't know. Oh, shit, dude. Guy yeah. Pierce and someone else, too, right? Yeah, it's that creepy guy from Trainspotting. Oh. Um, the, the Irish bloke. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 it sounds like somebody fucking, like a, a bee stung the back of his throat. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the movie line that I always do? Oh, uh, like uh, from The Departed. Oh, that's from way. Departed. That's, that's a different about, guy. Yeah. But this dude you're talking about has been in, like, quite a few He's movies. been in, he's in, like, 28 he's days, 28 weeks later. Yeah. He's oh, been yeah. in a bunch of movies. I think he's uh, in The Full Monty. It's The Full Monty. So you want me to take my cock out? Oh, my God. <laughs> She's like, oh, but, actually, nah, I'm second thought. Oh, I kiss my blimey stone. <laughs> okay. That was, How do you not that fuck that? That was <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so... Let's go around the world like Carmen San Diego. Yeah. First stop, India. Okay, that this is a, egg, a popular cannibalism. Mm-hmm. The Aghora Sadhus, a sect That's tribe of Hindu monks, are known to practice cannibalism among the banks of the Ganges River in the city of Ganges. Varanasi. The do so, they do so in the worship of the god Shiva, the destroyer, and the goddess the do so, the god Kali. Oh. Uh, the Egghori do not, however, eat the living. They only eat the flesh of the dead, sometimes uh-huh. from those who donate their bodies to the Egghori after death. So can you imagine, oh, it's like uh, some white, uh, what is it, white guilt liberal? It's like, I'm yeah. sorry, please, like, when well, I die, I'm, eat me. Yeah, give my, sacrifice <laughs> my body to, uh, what well, was yeah. it? These poor Egghori people. Yeah, what uh, did they sacrifice it to? Um, okay, so they sometimes, said, they only eat the flesh of the dead sometimes yeah. from those who donate their bodies to the Aghori after the death. Oh, and also, yeah. Yeah, and also Could from be. the unburned parts of bodies from funeral pyres 
along the riverbank and bodies that have simply been dumped into the Ganges yeah. from a ghat or a series Ooh. of stone steps leading into, into the river. If, uh, if you guys have never seen the Ganges or like yeah. the funeral pyro, pyres, what they're talking about, where they burn the bodies yeah. just along the, the river. Like fucking Liam Neeson in uh, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, like you're just <laughs> going out strong. I think they did that in uh, they do it Braveheart. They the banks of the too. river, you said? Did they put them on the river? Well, the there's like these giant like um, stone steps. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they pretty much, you know, so it's burned down, everything's burned down, and then they push it into the river. Oh, like the remains? Yeah. And wow. so these people are just like, hey, it didn't burn up, or you donate the body. I say just use the flame to, you don't even have to waste time on your, your stove top or your oven, you, you cook the flesh right there <laughs> in the funeral pyre, and just grab like a s'mores skewer and just pick little pieces off the funeral pyre. I want to he- taste less of the heat and more of the meat. Oh That's what I say. God. So the Aghori <laughs> live near crem- cremation centers, funeral pyres, like and do. body dumping sites. For yeah. ease, or go for, through the dumpsters for access to human flesh <laughs> and ash. It's like, hey, you got it all figured out. Just the stuff you're throwing out. Can I pick through it? Is that cool? Hey, you don't mind if I go and yeah. pick through your granddad? I mean, he's not oh doing anything God, right yeah. now. I mean, he's gonna be his the, knuckle right here looks pretty. Tasty. I might as well ask you because when you leave, yeah. I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh my God! Uh, you know, it's nice when someone's respectful. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So let's tear his skull open and start eating it. Um, they bathe daily in the Holy River and cover themselves in the ash of cremated human bodies afterwards. The Aghori are often known to drink urine from human skulls and to eat excrement. Huh. Now, everybody, now, if you were to say something disturbing or disgusting, yeah. like a shithole or call these fine people savages, yeah, that's just your, uh, you know, Western way, of thinking. Western way of thinking, of course. This is completely natural. I, and this sort of yeah. thing happens all the time. Yeah. So let that be a lesson culture. to you. I, I have to take <laughs> take issue with this. Yeah? Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, I'm going out on a limb. Okay. But, like, I, there's, there's something to eating flesh that, to me, is, like, disturbing and, and uh, un, unnatural. Mm. But, but... Uh, you know, whatever it has, like I can see where there's a spiritual meaning, or like so it's starting even to make ritualistic s- or something. Like I can understand starting that. Starting to make a little sense. Starting to make a little. Saying. I'm buying in. <laughs> but what? But like this is where I'm like I don't care. Like mm. drinking piss and shit is. That's yeah, what I don't give a, a fuck yeah, what yeah. your religion is. Like that's well, stupid. That's okay. Disgusting. So the, the it's human waste. Like. Christ. I don't get I mean, like you know you see dogs like eat shit and stuff and uh-huh. I'm like there I, maybe there's nutrients in the shit that when they eat it there happens to be nutrients <laughs> or something and they sniff it out but I'm just like what is wrong with your instincts that you look at something that was exited from a body because there was nothing left of nutrition in it. Well, Craig, I'm it glad is waste. I'm glad you How said would you that. Want to put that in your mouth because we're about to knock it up a notch. Because oh, we okay. need a little Talk more. About shit eating? The egg hori <laughs> therefore believe that they're... So grab a snack and listen to the rest of this. <laughs> their Some cannibalistic oatmeal. practices and the Chocolate act of ice cream. covering themselves in human ash and their secretive sexual rites held among the funeral pyre. So they're Wait. fucking in the ash, too. They're eating shit, they're drinking piss, they're and fucking on bones. covering themselves in the ash yes. and like, having sex. Like, secretive orgies. sexual rites held among the funeral pyre Help them to reject earthly attitudes of duality. Embrace death head on. How the fuck does it do either of those things? In order to break the cycle of reincarnation. Reject, more like E-Jack. And bring themselves closer to Shiva and Kali Ma. Shiva don't give a shit. It actually says Kali Ma. Are they eating monkey brains? (laughs) No, even better. Just shit. Oh my god. Eating ass. They're not you even eating weird? ass. They're just yeah, they're taking like the Kanye. fun part out of it. Yeah. They're just having somebody shit in the skull and eating oh, that. Yeah. That's what weird. Gives. It brings it, it circles it back around to when I was doing the, the penitent man. <laughs> which was like the Harrison it Ford. All works Didn't he out. Say that in one of them? Yeah, yeah. All right. So <laughs> Indonesia, New Guinea. Oh, that's, that's another, where we're next. We're flying over the to Ko- Koroi tribe. Who yeah. live in the jungles far in the New Drem Kabur River in Indonesia, New Guinea, are also known to practice cannibalism, though their reasons for doing so are far more spiritually enlightened. Mm. 
Uh, you know that river, the name of that river sounds like the kind of river uh, a guy can go swimming in and get parasites swimming up his pee hole. Exactly right. And, and lay so eggs in his testicles. Make sure you wear some boxers when you go swimming. Yeah, I always wear an extra trick. pair. And I, extra I, I, it never happened to me, so. Oh, there you go. Uh, so the Koroe yeah. believe that the death of their spiritual. fellow tribe members is sometimes the work of a male witch. The huh. Kanaha. Who devours them from within and replaces the insides of their victims little by little with ashes after each nightly feed and until the victim is dead. Wow, okay. I, my personal feelings <laughs> is that the Kanaha has nothing to do with it. <laughs> That's my Western... Personal beliefs. Yeah. Uh, before the victim dies, he or she will whisper to a nearby loved one the name of the Kanaha. The family will then capture whoever was named... Brutally execute them, dismember their body, and eat them. Curiously, the Koroa do not believe this to be cannibalism, as they do believe that a was a Karaha is entirely inhuman and only assumes the guise of a human, even if they've known and befriended the alleged Koaha for years. So, if there's a person that's sick. Uh-huh. Because we all know when people are at the end of their lives, they're pretty yeah. co- cognitive and coherent. Yeah, totally. So you just ask them, hey, is anybody <laughs> around here logic. a devil? Oh, God. And they just whisper a name. And then <sighs> it's not even murder. They do, or It's not even considered a cannibal. Oh, wow. He said, Konaha. Okay, shove that pillow over his face. Uh, <laughs> Paul Raffali described his experience with the Kurawa and accounts of him of killing and eating the yes. co- this thing in 2006 article for Smithsonian guided by the He's another s- like tribe yeah tribe. or he was just a he was just a guy that it was i guess oh, on wow. location guided oh, by shit. the Sumatran man named Kembaran uh Paul met a r- renowned Kalawa killer among the Korowa Name Kill Kill and his brother Balom. Upon meeting oh, Balom, hand, yeah. uh, Balom handed Paul uh, the skull Balom. they recently killed and consume uh, Bahawa. It's B- Bun Up, the most recent Kalawa <laughs> we names. killed. Yeah. It sounds like an episode of Naruto. The Kambaran <laughs> said. These are like Balam used a stone axe to split the skull open to get at the brains. He was one of the best porters, a cheerful young man. And Bulbasaur used vine whip to open up. No. Oh my god. That's basically what I heard, all those names. All right, and how many of those were spirits and how many were people? <laughs> <laughs> it gets confusing, I know. <laughs> Our last stop oh, on our boy. journey of cannibalism yeah. is so there's, Fiji. I'll give them that. It is more spiritual. Definitely. But it's a, a little <laughs> bit out there, man. It sounds like fucking they some, some, L. Ron Hubbard helped them come they up They got with some shit. pretty funny names. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah. To my Western ears. And um, the Charizard will come and <laughs> eat your soul or whatever. The, the, fuck la- the last officially recorded act of cannibalism happened in Fiji in 1867 Fiji. with the Rev. Thomas Baker, a Methodist missionary made the mistake of touching a chieftain's head, which oh, was shit. considered a grave insult. He gave a chieftain head? Oh, I misheard that, sorry. That's how you say thank you in the West. <laughs> yeah, he's just being the being, he's being the, polite. I mean, he is yeah. British, no? Welcome to Los Angeles. Put a dick in your mouth. <laughs> the Fijian tribe, to whom Baker was attempting to minister, then killed, dismembered, cook, and ate him. Whoa, really? Yep. According to Fijian legend, the land then became... Uh, in infertile, and peoples of Fiji believe that they had been cursed for killing a Christian missionary. The oh, people wow. of Fiji have made three official apologies to Baker's descendants. We're really sorry. The last one uh, being in uh, 2003. Legend holds that the land became fertile once they apologized to Baker's descendants. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> you don't Legend hold. How long ago was this that that supposedly happened? Oh, that that he was murdered and everything. Yeah, cooked in eight, uh, eighteen sixty-seven. Oh, okay. So wow, yeah, it happened a long time ago. It's like right around the time we have like Abraham Lincoln 
<laughs> it's like abolishing slavery or whatever. That's that. This, yeah, yeah. And there, well, you know, this missionary is like different. Strokes. Oh, I just read this article. They're abolishing slavery, and wait, you're gonna chop off my arms and do what? <laughs> Eat my entire body? Well, he just touched. Like he touched, touched the chieftain's head, head uh, the headpiece. Yeah. Which you know, now that I say it out loud, I kind of understand you why they, see... <laughs> they cooked him and ate him. <laughs> I see where they like that. Sounds like something a royal person would, like, get offended by. Mm. Uh, I think he maybe had a little bit rash of a response. Yeah. That's my personal... I'd be pretty PO'd <laughs> about it, too. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if someone's, you know, going to disrespect you like that, you got to eat them. <laughs> you might as well feed the village, am I right? Yeah. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, thank you for listening to Let's Spend the Night Together. It's that time. It's that time. We're wrapping up the show. We're out of time. Corey just pointed to the clock. He's pointing uh, to the clock. We're going to go out and get some Corey. wings and some brewskis and whatnot. Yeah. Watch wings or get wings? Because the... wings was, is a great 90s What's the fucking sitcom? diff? Yeah. God damn, it's, hard, it's hot as a witch's cunt in here. It's hot out All right, right everybody. Man. So thanks for spending some time with us. Don't anybody now. It's been you Let's hear? Spend the Night Together. I've been your host, oh, hi, hi. humble host. You, you can't say it right now, me. but I'm doing the prayer sign. Oh, yeah, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. Dante, yeah, with yeah. me as always is my colleague, Cal Horton, Kofefe, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mr. Craig. Yes. And you take Craig. care of yourself, guys. Sp- spay new to your dogs. Yeah, don't do anything <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne would do. Don't do anything <laughs> anyone from Indonesia. Or... <laughs> Try not to eat anybody because yeah. that's bad news. And it no. probably would give you some really bad indigestion. So, eat them out? Of course, they'll appreciate that. Yeah, you know what? You all, you, I you just say maybe that. get a little bit of honey, maybe get a little bit of cottage cheese and put it down there. Yeah. A little bit of honey mustard. I'm kind of into that cottage cheese thigh. You know, sometimes yeah. I put, with, with uh, the girl of mine, yeah. I like to put a little gravy down there. Really? You know, a little rotten a, milk? <laughs> Just right after Maybe it's expired. Maybe get a biscuit or like a, a chicken biscuit. tender from KFC. Gravy, I just yeah. had myself a whole meal. Yeah. Maybe some oatmeal. <laughs> some okra. <laughs> I was just going to say something. All okra. right. Let's spend the night together. Right. Or uh, Art might suggest a string cheese. <laughs> okay. We don't know when our third host, Artemio, or Art, will be back. Yeah. Uh, Godspeed, you black emperor. All right, yeah. everybody, be kind to your loved ones. And let's spend the watch Grace under fire. Go watch Grace under, under fire. Try not to eat anybody. You're going to really regret it if you do. Let's spend the night Bye. together. Bye. Grace under fire is... It's just fucking great. Why are you so hot? Why are you so mean?